Hey everybody, this is Harry coming to you from outside, not in the car, and bringing you my weekly uh, films that I've watched, the late edition. Um, just been busy, a lot going on um, with work and my wife being sick and all that, but I know you're not here to your excuses and for the 10 people who watch this video thank you very much for watching I, I don't do this for subscribers or whatever I just do it for enjoyment kind of get it out there to enjoy so um, I watched about seven movies last week um, and most of them some of them were um, I streamed through Amazon or Netflix and then I got the Netflix, uh, excuse me, uh, rental, DVD, Blu-ray rentals to come in. And then I watched one that I purchased online, DVD, which I'll show you in a minute. And so, um, kind of a eclectic watch this past week. Um, this is up till Friday of, uh last week that I watched so it's usually from Saturday to Friday and then um, so the last two Saturdays I didn't watch a film at all just because of, of the way the schedule my schedule's been so it uh, should be so I started on Sunday so uh, the first film I watched uh, last week was this, I've been kind of um, seeking out films of uh, Barbara Stanwyck she was one of my uh, mother's favorites uh, actresses back in the day. She's actually from Brooklyn, uh, where I'm from. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, and so I was kind of looking for stuff to watch, find and stream. I've watched a few on Amazon Prime in the last couple of months. And then I found this one, which was I, th I thought it was kind of iffy. Um, but I watched it, and it wasn't too bad. It was called Lady of Burlesque uh, from 1943. And it stars, uh, like I said, Barbara Star Stanwyck, Michael O'Shea, J. Edward Bromberg, uh, Iris Adrian, Gloria Dixon, um, and a bunch of others. It's based on a story by, uh, uh, I just had the name. I want to say Gypsy Rose Lee. That could be, I could have that wrong. Um. And it's it's a whodunit movie. It's uh, Barbara Burle uh, Barbara Stanwyck works at a burlesque show. Um, it was a burlesque? Yeah, it was uh, based on a novel by Jesse Rosley. Um, is a burlesque singer, uh, and there was a murder that happened. And the and for 1943, it was kind of. Uh, um, Risque, I guess, from the words of the. Uh, anyways, one of the women was strangled by a G string um, in the group. And then there's police raids. Um, they raid the burlesque, and everybody runs. There's a comic who loves, um, played by Michael O'Shea, who's a comic who loves Barbara Stanwyck, but she doesn't like him um, or want to get involved with him because he's a comic. Um, Hey, it wasn't a bad movie for a whodunit. It was weird. Uh, you get to see Barbara Stanwyck sing. Um, she does a burlesque dance. Uh, kind of uh, kind of weird. I never had seen her do uh, anything like this before. Um, yeah, what does it say here? What else? As I always do, I always stutter and ramble on with this crap here. Um, anyways, it came out in 1943. Um, and it's listed as a comedy music mystery. I like the tagline to it. Mirth, murder, melody, mystery, and girls, girls, girls. And um, the synopsis on Letterbox says, After one member of their group is murdered, the, performer, the performers at a burlesque house must work together to find out who the killer is before he strikes again the g-string killer so i gave 
Lady of Burlesque, uh, three and a half stars. So if you're looking for it, I imagine it's on video somewhere. I, I believe it's um, a public domain film, but it is on Amazon Prime, um, several versions of it, actually. I guess different companies have put it out. So Lady of Burlesque, 1943. Um, then I watched uh, the next night Ad Astra. It was, it was a DVD rental from uh, or Blu-ray rental from Netflix. Um, been wanting to see this for a while. I love space movies, and uh, this one didn't disappoint. Uh, you know, with some space movies, you gotta unless it's like Star Wars or something like that. Most of them kind of kind of drag along. <laughs> A little bit, and this is about a little bit over two hours long. And um, Brad Pitt is, has to go look for his father, who is a famous astronaut, and he is by the planet Neptune. And um, he goes in search for his father, and uh, and finds him give it away a little bit um, his father is played by Tommy Lee Jones and uh, and you most of the film you see him in little video clips um, and in photos and it's not towards till the very end um, that uh, Tommy Lee Jones shows up with Brad Pitt in the film and he travels from Earth <coughs> to the moon to the back side of the moon where there's a chase scene with some, uh, the moon's been colonized, so there's uh, people living on the moon, and there's programs and uh, work being done there, but there's also pirates, and they're chasing them on the moon on these wheelers, and pretty good. Donald Sutherland's also in the film. Uh, Ruth Nega, uh, John Ortiz, Liv Tyler, uh, Greg Burke, directed by James Gray. I highly recommend it. I, I, I was saying that, they, and when they go from there, they go to Mars, from the moon to the Mars on this thing. And, um, and then they don't want him to go look for his father, but he, he, he stowaways on a, a spacecraft and then winds up... Um, going to uh, Neptune to find his father. So, Ad Astra, Brad Pitt film. I gave that three and a half star. I'm sorry, four and a half stars. Uh, very enjoyable. If you haven't seen it, um, uh, catch it. Uh, just, ima just remember, though, it is, it, it's, 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 it's a, two, a little bit over two-hour film, but it, it, it drags a little bit in spots. But that's normally with space movies like 2001 Space Odyssey or Marooned or Interstellar, or, um, uh, oh goodness, can't think of the name of it right now, um, the one with Bruce Dern, I know Wolfgratz will tell me which one it is, but, uh, and it'll probably come to mind, like, a day later, um, but anyways, at Astra, the next, and then the next night I watched, um, a film Robert Harrison had watched. Um, he uh, mentioned on one of his films that he watched that week. And it's another Barbara Stanwyck film. And I decided, because it wasn't streaming anywhere, and I wasn't paying three ninety nine dollars streaming, but I would like to have it in my collection. It's Stella Dallas. A DVD. Yay. And it comes, actually, a bonus with it. It comes with a silent, uh, it says a featurette, but it's actually the full silent movie from 1925 uh, with uh, uh, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. In, the, in one of the roles of the film. Very young uh, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Uh, Stella Dallas came out in 1937 directed by King Vidor. Um, stars Barbara Stanwyck, John Bowles, Anne Shirley, Barbara O'Neill, Alan Hale, who plays a really a creepy, creepy uh, guy in this film. Marjorie Maine, you know, from the uh, 
the egg and I, the uh, mom and pa kettle films, uh, George Walcott and Shoemaker, Tim Holt, a lot of a lot of good actors, very good drama. Um, I, I I enjoyed this movie very much, and it's a. Uh, Stella Dallas is a girl who has big dreams. She kind of romanticizes marrying a rich man and um, having a good life. And then she meets um, this fellow named Dallas, played by John Bowles. And they wind up um, getting married, and then they have a child. Um, but he has a lot of money, and he, he goes to business in New York. She doesn't want to go. And they kind of leave separate lives, and she's been raising... Her daughter for um, a, a long time, and then uh, and then um, things come to a head where he wants a divorce from her, and he wants to go on with his life, and she doesn't. At first, she doesn't want to do it, and then, but she sees that she needs to do right by her daughter, and to give her the life that she needs and very good movie she was nominated uh, for an Academy Award for this film um, did not win but uh, it's worth seeking out if you like the type of film drama uh, very great good acting by everybody involved especially Barbara Stanwyck who I'm becoming uh, more and more of a fan of I remember her from the Big Valley days um, that was a TV show here in the States back in the day. I gave the Stella Dallas four, uh, four out of five stars. And the reason why I didn't give it a fifth star, um, I guess because that, maybe the length it was a little bit too long. But other than that, I, 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 it's an excellent film. And the following, because I'm already in it or two, 12 and a half minutes and I already um, haven't even got halfway through um, watched on Netflix a movie I never watched in the 90s I mentioned before the 90s were kind of time period where I didn't watch a lot of movies because of things in my personal life with my wife passing away and raising three kids so I didn't didn't remember seeing a bunch of movies so Kingpin um, with Woody Harrelson and uh, Randy Quaid and it and Bill Murray a bowling movie uh, this funny movie was funny as shit it was uh, directed by the Firely brothers Bobby and Peter Firely came out in 1996 funny as shit movie and uh, we just watched um, the big Lebowski um, the other day for a grumpy old men channel and uh, so it was bowling movie. Bowling movie. Uh, I guess the, the 90s were big on bowling films. Uh, who else was in this? Vanessa Angel, who looks uh, really beautiful in this film. Chris Elliott, who I can't stand. Uh, he wasn't in there that long. But it was great, funny, funny movie. Uh, favorite part is, is there... Uh, Randy Quaid's Amish, so, and Woody Harrelson lost his hand, and um, he owed money. Well, they, 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 not owed money, but he uh, hustled people at a bowling alley, and uh, him and Bill Murray, and um, wound up owing these, these people that weren't happy to, with him being hustled, and so they took his hand and but anyways, and they come across Randy Quaid bowling in a bowling alley years later, and but the funny part with that with that is is again I can't I, I can never do these things. Um, this is that he goes to the Amish farm and trying to recruit Randy Quaid to come do go to the bowling tournament, this big bowling tournament, and he's milking. He said, "Oh, I milked the cow because they were looking for him." They said, "Well, I guess he ran off." He said, oh, I milked, I milked the cow and all that, and come to find out they don't have cows, they only have bulls. <laughs> and so he had a bucket full, and he had a little 
milk mustache on here. I thought that's funny as shit. I'm into sick humor like that. So, uh, Kingpin, I gave that as four stars as well, as well as this one, Stella Dallas. Then on Amazon, I watched a documentary called Armstrong that came out last year, uh, narrated by um, Harrison Ford, who was doing Neil Armstrong's voice. Um, also starred, well, in the documentary, David Scott, Christopher Kraft, Jerry Griffin. Last year was the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So there was a lot of films like that, uh, about Apollo 11. Um, yeah. And so this was one of them films. Uh, first Man was the, the first one I watched was a film that came out um, last uh, the year before. I watched that. Um, and, but I had seen this this on there. I've been wanting to see this, and I've seen it was streaming on Amazon. So I went ahead and watched it, and I gave that one four stars. Then the next night, I know we're almost done here. Um, I watched um, Harold and Maud. That was a Netflix rental uh, from 1971. I had never seen the film. At least I don't remember ever watching it, and I enjoyed it. It's quirky. It's funny. Um, it was directed by Hal Ashby. It starred Ruth Gordon, Bud Court, Vivian Pickles, uh, Cyril Cusack, Charles Tyner, Ellen Gear, Eric Christmas. And it's um, this boy who is obsessed with death, going to funerals and trying to kill himself. And fake, well, not really kill himself, but he does stuff like try to hang himself. He sent himself. That was the funny part. His mother sitting there talking, and in the background you see him. Looks like he kick, he catches himself on fire, um, and Ruth Gordon is kind of like a free will lady who's in her seventies or eighties, and they fall in love with each other because they kind of do the same thing. She she can't drive for shit, uh, steals people's cars and does whatever she wants and doesn't care and lives in an old train caboose. Uh, so, but it was a, a very enjoyable movie. I'm surprised I had never um, seen it before, and it was on the Criterion uh, collection that, that Netflix had sent. So, uh, good film, Harold and Maude. I imagine many people have seen that one. And the last film I watched, and I'll, I'll end it with this here. I gave two stars. Kind of been trying to catch up on some Sylvester Stallone movies I haven't seen. And some of them are for a while, like last week I watched Nighthawks, and then I seen this one on Amazon Prime called Escape Plan 2, Hades. I watched the original Escape Plan with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I, I enjoyed it. It was a good film. Not the greatest in the film, but it was enjoyable. It was the Schwarzenegger and Stallone film. This one here was a load of shit. It, it was... Still only even not even the, the, the main actor in the film. You are not the lead. And uh, his face is all over it. Dave Batista's in it. They got his picture plastered over the posters and, and DVD cover, Blu-ray cover. Um, I'm glad I, I streamed this and not bought it and did not buy it. It was cheaply made, uh, poorly edited. Um, I guess it was just a paycheck for Stallone, and this was, I guess, right, it came out, what, 2018, so it was between Creed and, and Creed Two when this came out. So he, you know, Creed he gave an Oscar nominated performance in that. This one, he gets the fucking raspberry. So, and if you're not familiar with Escape Plan, um, He's a, a guy who works uh, at a company that his, his, his thing is, is break, getting into the prisons and trying to break out of the prisons to see where their weak spots are. And uh, this movie was totally weak. You should have just not even done it. There's a third one, which uh, I'll probably try to watch sometime in the next few days to just say I watched it because I'm a completist. So... Yeah, that's what I watched this week. Um, glad I bored all of you. Maybe, maybe you can get uh, get some inspiration from what you know, what I, the films I've mentioned. Um, maybe 
watch them or not. Comment below what you think of the films I've watched. Uh, how do I can prove myself? Maybe hire somebody to do my, my stuff. But anyways, I, I'll just go over the list. Lady Bur uh, Burlesque, uh, Ad Astra, Stella Dallas, Kingpin, Armstrong, Harold and Maud, Escape Plan 2, Hades. Watch everybody else's. Bob does his weekly. He's the inspiration for this. He's the godfather of the weekly films that he wa we watch. Mike has contributed. Uh, Brian, um, Cubic Lover, 1972. But everybody knows him as Brian now. He has done it, and now James has jumped into the fray. Maybe Ian. Ian does post his on Facebook, uh, his diary for Letterboxd, the films that he watches. So um, everybody keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. Bye.